In this presentation, we'll talk about mites. The body regions of the arachnids are divided into the cephalothorax. They also have the presence of the abdomen and the presence of the eight legs. They exhibit a simple type of metamorphosis, which is also known as a hemimetabolous type of life cycle, composed of the egg, the larvae, the nymph, and the adult. For the groups of the parasitic arachnids, they belong to the phylum arthropoda, class arachnida, and the subclass acari. We have two groups of interest in veterinary medicine. We have the mites and the ticks. The mites belong to the subclass Akari and it is composed of different suborders which include the mesostigmata, astigmata, and the prostigmata. For the mesostigmata or the mesostigmatid mites, this includes the dermanesus and the ornithonesus. For the astigmatid mites, this includes the genus Sarcoptes, Natoedres, and the Autodectes. For the prostigmatid mites, this includes the Demodex. For the ticks, again for the taxonomy of the ticks, the ticks belong to the phylum Arthropoda, class Arachnida, subclass Acari, superorder Parasitiformes, together with uh, mites, order Ixodida and the superfamily Ixodoidea. Under this, we have the suborder Mesos, uh, Metastigmata, or the Metastigmatid, which are subdivided into two um, families, now the Ixodidae and the Argacidae. The Ixodidae is also known as the hard ticks, while the Argacidae family is also known as the soft ticks. This presentation will, talk, will focus on the mesostigmatid mites. The, they are also known as the poultry mites. So this presentation will aim to familiarize the scientific and the common names of the two poultry mites and compare the poultry mites, Dermanesus gallinae and the Ornithonesus sylviarum. In terms of their habitat, transmission, pathology, surveillance, treatment, control, and biosecurity. Arthropods have a tracheal system that carries oxygen to various parts of the body. For high-level taxonomy, mites are classified by the location of the openings or the stigmata to their tracheal system. In the case of the mesostigmatid mites, their tracheals as Tracheal pores or the stigmata are located in the middle of their bodies, particularly located between the coxae or the hip joints of the third and the fourth legs. These mites include the genus Dermanesus and the Ornithonesus, which are also known as poultry mites. They are blood suckers and they also infest wild birds. This diagram shows the important anatomical parts of the mesostigmatid mite Dermanesus species. So among the parts of the mesostigmatid mites are the chelicera, the pulp, the peritrine, we also have the, the anus, the anal plate, and the stigma or the stigmata, which serve as the respiratory pore of the mite. For this particular suborder of mite, the Stigmata or the respiratory pores is located between the coxae or the hip joint of the third and the fourth legs. So let us start with the uh, Dermanesus gallinae. So the common name of the Dermanesus gallinae is the roos mite or the red chicken mite. This particular mesostigmatid mite infests chickens, turkeys, pigeons, doves, bird, uh, pet birds, and various wild birds worldwide. It is spread from farm to farm by sparrows, pigeons, egg flats, bird crates, people, and others. An important characteristic of this mite is that they hide in the environment during daytime. They feed on birds during the night. For the life cycle, this may be completed in only one week. Thus, populations can increase rapidly. If birds are unavailable, then these mites will feed on other hosts, particularly the horses, dogs, as well as humans. 
this diagram shows the life cycle of the mites, uh, particularly the Dermanesus gallinae. So in the life cycle of the mites, we have the larvae and the nymphal stages. For the nymphal stages, we have the protonym and the diotonym. The young mites, the larvae, the protonym and the diotonym look like the adults. Uh, the only difference is that uh, they, have, they only have three pairs of legs and of course they are smaller compared to the adults. This diagram also uh, shows the infestation of the poultry red mite can lead to stress and packing agitation, additional mortality, spread of pathogens of bacterial and viral origin. We also have anemia since these parasites are blood suckers, weight loss, agitation and irritation, uh, higher feed conversion, decreased egg production, decreased egg quality through shell thinning and blood uh, spotting, and as well as allergic reactions in humans. Characteristic of the Dermanesis gallinae or the red chicken mite is that during the day they hide in the environment but at night they attack the birds. For the veterinary significance of mites, particularly Dermanesis gallinae, uh, low numbers of mites mainly cause irritation and annoyance to the chicken, making it restless. When there is a large number of infestation, it can cause anemia since these mites are blood suckers, resulting to pale comb and wattles, weakness and dullness. Uh, in the flock level, the flock is considered to be restless and stressed. There can also be feather pecking and fighting. For the economic significance of these mites, it can cause decrease in egg production, decrease in weight gain, and increase in the feed conversion ratio. For the mortality of the chicks and chickens in cases of extreme infestation, so th this is one of the a great no, economic impact of this particular mite since um, extreme infestation can cause mortality. There can also be irritation for the farm staff. This diagram shows the clinical manifestation of the uh, infestation with Dermanesis gallinae. For the prevention, control, and treatment of the Dermanesis gallinae infestation, so it is important to purchase mite-free birds and use good sanitation practices to prevent the buildup of mite populations in the flock. Acaricides can also be used through high pressure sprays and dust. The acaricides can be primarily applied through the environment and secondarily through the birds. A house may remain infested for up to nine months after birds are removed. Systemic control with ivermectin or moxidectin is also effective for short periods, but is considered to be expensive, toxic, and require repeated use. Vaccines for this particular mite is in development. The next species of poultry mite is the Ornithonisus sylviarum or the northern fowl mite. This is considered to be the most important ectoparasite of poultry that infests chickens, turkeys, pigeons, and various wild birds. All stages are found on the host and it spends most of the time on birds, rarely wanders. They are carried in fomites such as egg crates, clothing, and others. If birds are unavailable, then they will feed on other hosts such as horses, dogs, and men. For the significance of the Ornithonisus sylviarum, it can cause blood loss, loss of weight, decrease in egg production per layers, decrease in feed conversion efficiency, and depth. It can also cause soiled and matted feathers, crossed the skin, severe scabbing, especially around the vent area. For the treatment of this particular mite, so the primary treatment, for example, uh, we can use um, acaricides. It should be um, towards the birds and secondarily towards the environment. This diagram shows the Ornithonisus sylviarum or the northern fall mite. Left is the dorsal view, the right is the ventral view. Ornithonisus sylviarum infestation can cause 
soiled and matted, matted feathers, severe scabbing, especially around the vent area, and uh, we also have a decrease in the egg production. This diagram shows the ornithoniso silviarum mites and excrement on the vent area of a broiler breeder hen. This diagram shows the ectoparasitic arthropod pest of poultry. So clockwise from the upper left, we have here the Ornithonisus silviarum, northern fowl mite. We also have here the Menacanthus traminius or the chicken body louse. The, we also have the scaly leg mite, Nemidocoptes mutans, and the Echidnophaga gallinacea or the stick tight flea. So we have here the index for estimating the infestation of the Ornithonisus silviarum. Uh, a zero index means that there is no mite on the bird. Um, an index of one means that there is a one to 50 mites that are present. So this is indicative of a light infestation. 50 to 1,000 mites is an indication of a moderate infestation. That is, uh, we have an index of two. For an index of 3, we have uh, 1,000 to 25,000 mites, that is a moderate or heavy infestation. And uh, an index of 4 is the highest, 25,000 plus mites, that is considered to be a heavy infestation. So this uh, index 2, 3, and 4 requires treatment. So we have here a figure showing the pruritic erythematous lesions caused by parasitism of all silviarum in the abdomen of workers. We also have here the all silviarum collected from a commercial laying hen house. At letter C, we have here a focus on the anal plates of the ornithonisus silviarum, which is described to be a teardrop shaped. And at letter D, we have the the vent feathers of poultry parasitized by O. silviarum with a higher infestation index. So for the prevention and control of poultry mites, we have here a program known as the Poultry Mites Surveillance Program. So this program needs, um, requires that the poultry producers must regularly inspect their flock for the presence of mites. For the Dermanesus gallinae, the producers or the caretakers need to inspect the sample cracks, the crevices of the chicken house, sample debris from roost, slats, nest boxes, and others. And they must also use small brush and flashlight headlamp during inspection, uh, particularly not during the night. So what else might you find during the inspections? You might also find soft ticks as well as bed bugs. So bed bugs or Cymex lectularius also infest poultry houses like that of the Dermanesus. They also hide in crevices during the day and feed on the host at night. For the Ornithonisus silviarum, we need to inspect the birds directly. Particularly, we have to examine the vent area. Use, use flashlight or headlamp during examination. Examine several birds weekly to monthly. And uh, aside from this uh, parasite, we can also expect to find lice. So lice, like that of the Ornithonisus, stay on the host all the time. So only the chewing or the malifagan lice infect birds. For the prevention and control, or for the treatment and control, so treat with insecticide, sprays, powders, and dust. For the in the case of the Ornithonisus salviarum, you can apply this directly to the birds. In case of the Dermanesus gallinae, the primary treatment is uh, indicated for the house, the equipment, and the uh, secondarily the birds. For the control. We need uh, to, to clean the house, equipment, and others before occupancy. Also, we need to apply residual insecticide. We also need to check and treat new birds before occupancy. And we need to practice biosecurity. So workers, equipment, 
egg plants, birds, and the crates must undergo biosecurity as well as wild birds and rodents. So uh, prevention of mite introduction of luck is best because eradication is incredibly difficult. Any acaricidal spray treatments must be applied with sufficient force to penetrate the feathers and the vent area. Resistance to pyrethrins and pyrethroids is widespread and few other chemical treatments are available for use in birds. We also have the dust boxes with sand and acaricidal materials are very effective for bird self-treatment of mites. So for bird mites or the poultry mites, in the absence of uh, the poultry, they can also infest humans as well as horses. So that is why they are also considered to be a temporary zoonosis 